Okay, it looks like we're live. I'm so excited to be back for another uh, week of Methods of Modern Finance. I'm really excited for this week. If you joined us for our last uh, webinar, we had the SBA here and we had um, all the different groups for all the different certificates, the A, the 8A certificate, the Women Owned Business Certificate, Veterans Owned Business Certificate, um, and HUD Zone. So we went through all of the requirements for that. And part of that was a quite extensive talk on what PTAC was and what their role is um, in getting government contracts. So I thought that it was a perfect um, time to bring Jack, who is um, our local PTAC representative, and I lean on him considerably. Anytime I have a government contract or anything like that, I uh, send an email off to Jack and say, hey, I'm working with this business. I need your help. And I bring him in and he's absolutely incredible. So I'm really excited to turn the time over to to Jack today and have him explain his role with PTAC, what PTAC does, and ultimately what you need to do as a business owner before you go to PTAC to make sure that you're ready for government contracts. I want to give a quick disclaimer, a quick, a quick thank you to the uh, U.S. Small Business Administration. We do have a cooperative agreement with them that helps with our funding as well as Utah State University um, that allows us to put on these amazing workshops to um, get these best, this information out to local businesses. So we would thank those two groups and I'm going to turn the time over to Jack. Jack, go ahead and take it away. Okay, thank you. Thanks so much. Meg is right. We uh, dovetail in with the SBA all the time. The SBA does some explaining and we do some explaining. And uh, the government ent entity I work for is the Utah Governor's Office of Economic Development. And uh, the GOED, it's known as in an acronym, and in particular, uh, GOED has several divisions, and one of them is PTAC, and that stands for, for uh, <laughs> I'll be all right. Never mind, I'll tell you later what PTAC stands for, okay? Anyway, trust me, trust me when I tell you that it uh, has to do with the technical requirements that you are going to have to uh, respond to to be signed up with government and and uh, by the way, it's Procur Procurement Technical Assistance Center. And don't hold me responsible for that name. I didn't give it. It's actually 35 years old, the acronym and the name. And it has to do with uh, the fact that there are 95 PTAC organizations in the United States. And I'll explain a little mo bit more about the organization uh, in a minute. So uh, PTAC helps businesses, small businesses primarily, uh, throughout the state, there's eight people that do what I do, help you get organized on uh, government contracting. And it's everything from getting registered with the most basic uh, websites and gives you the most basic exposure all the way up to what Megan was talking about, those certifications and helping you with those certifications as well. So SBA is the expert on those certifications, but PTAC can walk you through a lot of nuts and bolts of that. All right. So I'm going to have, do a presentation today that tells you what we do. And while I'm telling you what we do, I'm going to be giving you some pointers on uh, how to call upon us and me in particular to give you some assistance. Now, uh, I said there's eight people that do what I do. I handle the seven easternmost counties in Utah. And so I'll give you an idea what that is here in a second. But uh, there's several in the city, of course, between uh, Ogden and Provo. There's a couple down in southeast, southwestern Utah. And there's a couple up in northeastern Utah, uh, the, the Logan area. So I'm going to handle the, I handle the, the uh, eastern part of the state, seven counties, I counted up the total square mileage one day and I don't want to talk about it. It's a big territory, but uh, it's fun. It's, it's a great territory. People are very friendly throughout my territory. I really get to take advantage of the fact that folks are willing to learn and willing to understand what they need to do to get into government contracting. So that's who we are, the Utah Governor's Office of Economic Development. PTAC, protecting, I guess if I'd have showed this slide, I'd been able to come up with it. P Procurement Technical Assistance Center, and it's all about small business contracting. That's me. 
I have some uh, experience in small with small business. I owned a small business. I've run small business for the better part of 30 years. And it's been a great honor and pleasure to run and work on several different size businesses along the way. <clears throat> okay, now what? So please bear with me a second. Can't get my own. There we go. All right. Um, there's three organizations that make up PTAC uh, in our efforts within the governor's office. The biggest one is the Defense Logistics Agency that's part of the Defense Department. Uh, it happens to be the distribution arm of the Defense Department. And it's huge. It's all over the world. It's got, they have a couple warehouses in DC that are square mile in, in uh, area. And the, uh, the fact is they provide about 65 to 70% of our funding each year. And why are they involved? Well, they're involved because the Congress has determined that a certain amount of federal contracting will go to uh, small business every year. So the Defense Department is incentivized, each, each agency within it, each uh, group is incentivized to use small business. And all told, about 23% of the business that the government does in defense is earmarked to go to small business. It always, doesn't always work out that way, but they try and they, and they, they, they keep a score as to what, how they're doing against those dynamics. Utah State University helps us and the governor's office. So Utah, we'll, we'll get into each of these areas. Oops. Okay, so there it is. Defense, the Defense Logistics Agency is major funding. It's extending that hand to small business. And this is bona fide. This just isn't lip, lip service. This is, this is an effort by defense, by the DLA to push business to small business. And we are watched like a hawk, basically, to see how much business we can round up from the, through the Defense Department. And it's, it's great fun working with small businesses to see what we can get for them. And they, they do monitor our success rate, trust me. The Utah Governor's Office of Economic Development, they work within the DLA programs. We're, at, we're actually directed in some cases, PTAC is, by the DLA on how we operate within certain parameters. There's eight regional reps. I told you about tracking the success. It seems like everybody's tracking our success and which is okay. I mean, we're, we're supposed to help small business get business and we track that business. And in 2018, in Utah alone, $700 million went to defense contracts to small business. In 2019, it was closer to 800 million and there's no records yet on 2020. But that's a lot of business from the state of Utah and a bunch of it went to uh, rural Utah. And Utah State University works on operations, okay? They give us administrative support if we need it, office space, computer and telephone. Uh, if I need a car bad enough, I can use one of their cars, one of the state vehicles. And they have uh, clerical folks that also help us all the time every day. So uh, we haven't, I haven't been able to use my office for about six months. I've been at home because the governor ordered us home. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, my office is over there waiting for me and I'm looking forward to getting back over there so I can work uh, in an environment that's a little more conducive to uh, running a business, basically. There's the territory, okay? Seven counties in Eastern and Southeastern Utah. And that's why Megan and I are associated uh, because I work a lot with businesses down in San Juan County and Grand County. Um, in these seven counties, in the first six months in 2020, these seven counties accounted for $3.1 million in business. So I haven't gotten the results from the second half of last year, but let's count that, let's just say that it, it doubled, all right? So in an off year where nobody's allowed to travel anywhere, in these seven counties, six point whatever million dollars worth of business was 
push to small business in these counties. That's, that's not bad. That's not bad for our rural environment. Let's talk a little bit about uh, common misconceptions about working with the government. I always try to allay fears of small business and working with governments, and there are some common misconceptions. One thing I didn't mention uh, is that I used to be a small business owner eight years and worked with federal contracting. About 70% of my business was derived from working with uh, federal prime contractors and selling product products directly to the military bases. And of that business, uh, a lot of my business was distribution. Just about all of it was distribution. And when I say distribution, I, we called ourselves an industrial products distributor. Distributor. We worked with hard to find products and we, we, sell, we used to say we sell, sold everything, but everything from pencils to pumps. And we did. And a co common misperception, so, I, so I, 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 I have to hang on this, that's personal, okay? One common misperception is there are a lot of red tape. And, and my observation and my personal experience was there's no more red tape in working a government contract than working with other, any other large company. If you've ever done a subcontract for a, a large company, whether you're you know, supplying products or whether you're providing a service, they're going to have a contract for you and they're going to have rules and regulations that you have to follow. Another common mis misperception is you got to jump through too many hoops to be qualified to work with federal agencies. There's, there's no more hoops than working with anybody else. And I, I used to run a big business and we, we had our hoops and corporates sent their hoops down to us. And there was not there's not more hoops working with government contracting. There's just a different set of hoops. So let's, uh, when we talk about that, let's uh, think in terms of, we just have to get used to understanding who we're working with. Okay, another misconception, misperception. Government pay slow. Not if you do your paperwork. They've got several different payment software programs. I understand that, and you have to get used to that. But if you do all your paperwork for somebody, you're going to get paid in 30 days. I owned this business from 2009 to 2017, basically. Started uh, acquiring the business in 2008. So how much uglier could the economy be than it was back then? So we operated, my wife and I did, operated on cash flow alone for a couple of three years in that period. And part of that was these 30 day payments by the government. We got used to submitting our invoices and getting paid on time. And that was the way we ran our business. Okay. So, and occasionally, occasionally you'll run into a contracting officer that will say, Hey, if you can supply this stuff in 27 days, I'll pay you in 20 days. And we did that all the time. Los Alamos laboratories, they, they would do that all the time. The lady over there was really nice. She would say, just get this stuff to me when I need it and I'll pay you in 20 days. You run into that all the time. So that's a misperception. So why do you want to do it? Okay. For one reason, for one thing, uh, I'm never going to propose you know, unless we look at your business model and it fits, I'm never going to propose the bulk of your business is going to come from the government. Um, I'm going to propose, propose that this is going to augment your business, the work that we do with the government. And through that, you get PTAC, my support, the SBA, you got SAM.gov, the Federal Service Desk. You've got all these organizations that will help you get started. And They'll help you along the way, answer questions, walk you through trouble, that kind of thing. Uh, incremental business, we already talked about. It's scalable, too. Um, if you're in a service business where you're busy most of the year, and all of a sudden you got a little downturn, you can turn to bidding some government work that'll give you some scale, some scale in that. And once you get used to it, each year as you do your budgeting, you'll plan on a little more and a little more and a little more work from government. Uh, you get 
regional and nationwide exposures. This is what my wife and I had in our distribution company was uh, we were exposed and shipping products all over the country because uh, we were a distribution company. We mostly moved resale items. And so it depends on what business you're in, but you can get exposure nationwide. You have responsive customers, okay? They not only want their stuff when they said they want it, but they'll use you again. They'll use you again. They're looking for the same thing. Government contracting officers are looking for the same thing any customer is looking for, on-time delivery and hassle-free delivery. And if you're good at that, then you're going to be good working with the government on projects. They have great cash flow. I talked about that. And this one, um, I could talk for a day about this, but you don't want me to. But we're located in a hub zone. That whole blue map that I showed you, those seven eastern counties, that whole blue map has to do with one single hub zone. And that's historically underutilized business zone. And by the time you get certified as a hub zone company, you, have, you will ultimately have approximately 10% advantage in pricing, which means your pricing is compared to brand X, who's not in a, SAM, a hub zone. And pretty soon they're considering you because of your set aside. And even though you aren't low bid, you are considered under the set aside program and may well get the bid. So we're in a hub, historically underutilized business zone called a hub zone and I'll help to certify anybody who's interested in getting certified in a hub zone. Um, by the way, Megan mentioned those certification processes. Some of that stuff used to be cert self certification. You could go into sam.gov, expose yourself to contracting officers and self certify in a number of areas, women owned, hub zone. They don't let you do it anymore. And why? Because we're paying the price for all the cheaters out there. People were cheating in the program and now they want to certify you to make sure you live where you say you live, your, your office is located where you say your office is located and you're employing people that are within the, the hub zone. That's what that's about. We'll talk more about that hopefully in another day. Okay, there's our 23% of the business. Okay, what do they buy? Everything. This was one week in the life of my business. This isn't all we sold in that week either, but talk about variety. There's a flashlight. There's a there's a, a compressor over on the right there. A toilet. Oh, imagine that. There's a, uh, a a bulletin board you see inside offices often. A metal bending machine. Belts, right? J bolts, right? Just a wide variety. And do, what do they buy? They buy everything pencils to pumps and having to do with services it's about the same game in services so uh, if you're wondering if you can sell your product to the government i always encourage people to talk to me about it let's talk about what you sell and then the answer is going to be yes just about all the time and say that's a question that's coming across. Are there any industries that don't work for government contracts? I can't think of a single one, honest to goodness. I can't think of anybody that doesn't. Yesterday, I did a, a presentation on beta.sam.gov, which is the looking for solicitations that are floated out by government contracting officers. And last week, I went through how to search on beta.sam.gov. And uh, it still amazes me today, all, the, all the, uh, the solicitations that are put out for pencils to pumps. So it's, if you asked me if they were gonna buy your product, uh, I would look for you to be polite, but in the back of my mind, it's, it's yes, yes, yes. Somebody buys it somewhere, okay? Is that square, square us there, Megan, you think, with that answer? I think so. Okay, good. Um, what does PTAC help with, right? You got to have a Dunn's number to do that. It's a nine digit number. It's, it's issued currently by Dunn and Bradstreet. It's a nine digit number that we can help you get, right? SAM.gov registration. Can't, if you aren't in, don't have a Dunn's number and you're not in SAM.gov, they won't consider you because they can't use you until you're, you're, in, the, you're in those registrations, all right? Job RFQ postings. I anticipate that from my, I'm calling them nuts and bolts workshops, 
I'm anticipating that from these workshops I'm doing this spring, that I'm going to have a lot of people call me and ask me to walk through a RFQ or a solicitation with them, which is exactly what I do for a living. Okay. So yes, we help with RFQ postings. And Megan already touched briefly on these, but these are all certifications. Are you 8A? Are you women owned? Are you economic dis economically disadvantaged? Hub zone, 8A firm, minority owned, native tribal. Okay. And it, it's amazing in my territory how many times I get involved with a tribal business or a minority owned business, and we're working to get them 8A certified. And the 8A certification, I'll just spend a couple of seconds on it because it's, again, you could talk all afternoon on each one of these certifications. But 8A has, happens to be where you live. Are you economically disadvantaged as it is? Are you a small company that wants to get bigger? And there are actually set asides for small business that are quoted by the federal government where there is no competition. If you're the 8A and you can do the work, they give you the job. You don't even compete for it. So, uh, and that's a good thing, by the way. So uh, where we are with uh, these certifications, it's an evolving process because the certification is fairly new. It's just in the last year. Uh, if you go to if you go to SBA's website, they'll say, well, we've been requiring this since 2017. Uh, maybe you have, but it just hit the streets last year. So we... Uh, we're helping with these certifications. And sometimes the processes take longer than others. It's a little bit paper heavy, but there's no paper ever been requested that I can think of that hasn't been in a file drawer at your office somewhere. Okay, so that's what they ask for. They wanna prove that you are who you say you are. We help with all this stuff. One thing about getting those certifications, it's it's kind of prepping you for the process of tracking and, and, and being ready for a government contract. So as you're going through that process, just, just understand that you're, you're pulling in the paperwork, you're doing that, you're getting ready for that process. So, so that's another thing. Um, I am getting a question about um, DBE. Do you help with the DBE certification? Well... I probably do, but I'm not grabbing a hold of the acronym right now. So what what's the DBE? Do we the know? The DBE is through the Department of Transportation generally, um, and it's the federal certification program for disadvantaged businesses, disadvantaged okay. business enterprise. All right. This is my favorite part of the job. Okay. So did I have to admit that I don't know everything? Yeah, just right there. But I go get I get to go study. I get to contact the people that are responsible for, for this type of certification and I get to educate you on it. So did I know what a DBE was right away? No, but would I know what a DBE is in a day and a half? Yeah, and then we'd work on it together. Okay. All right. Like I said, yesterday we had a workshop on rooting around in beta.sam.gov and finding solicitations that would uh, benefit your business and that's the, that's a consolidated site now where they brought all the uh, different search sites that the federal government was using uh, together into beta.sam.gov when i had my business this shows 10 when i had my my business for what i was doing i had to register for five different sites where rfqs were posted solicitations were posted so they brought all this back together into one site, beta.sam.gov. And this is what, I'm going to try to go there without goofing up here. Um, this is what beta.sam.gov does now. And they've consolidated even more things like ultimately, I don't think this year, but year after this, sam.gov might be gone and you go into here to register for sam.gov. Matter of fact, you can do it now, but since it's not the law, I haven't even studied how it's done. So take my word for it when we've simplified the solicitation process. There, we talked about these already. So uh, these are the very specific business certifications. Hey, if you're a, if you're a veteran owned business, 
we can get you your VOSB certification. If you're a disabled veteran, we can get that certification for you too. And again, they've made it kind of a long process because there have been people that have cheated in that process, non-veterans and veterans who weren't disabled. And it's the same as it with anything. They make us pay, make the good people pay for the bad guys. But so it is a process. So uh, I would be overjoyed to help you with that program to get you on the road to your veteran certification. It lasts three years. You do it once. You look at it once a year, you click a box said, yeah, I updated this. Have a nice day. And they, and they, uh, they, you're good for three years. Women own small business. We talked about 8A and HUBZone. So call upon PTAC, me, and Megan can help to on getting your certifications across the board for small business. They all help you with small business set aside programs. Okay. I am getting a question on the hub zone for, for our RCIC in this, when we open, we will have everything set up to qualify for hub zone. So you have Good. to have like a, a signage and things like that. We will make sure that that's in place. So if you're using the RCIC as your office, we will make sure that that is in place to qualify. And I have been working with SBA to make sure that we are making those, those, those minimum um, and I believe most of the RCICs in the area that are doing that in the different places. Like I know I talked to Vernal, they're doing that. So they wanna make sure that, that we, we're we following all those regulations. So the person that asked that, yes, we will be a, a hub zone or we will be able to be hub zone if you use this as your office. Yeah, and it, what makes it even easier uh, for those organizations, those uh, office condos or whatever they are, what makes it even easier is that the whole area here is a hub zone. So they're going to, you're going to land in a hub zone anyway. Right. I mean, and this is the question you had last week, wasn't it? When we were online with SBA, you were asking about these organizations and how that they're treated in hub zone. Anyway, if you, if you yeah. weren't, if that was, if I dreamt it, then uh, you just answered the question anyway. Yep, um, I did. I, that's why that's why I had asked because they had asked because they had planned to use our space as their office. And they wanted to make sure they qualified. So yeah, the only thing they'd have to cover then is if they have employees, are their employees located lo, uh, located in a hub zone? So that would be the only other step you'd have to carry on, right? Okay, grants.gov. Why am I talking about grants? Um, actually, the DLA doesn't sponsor any grants, and they uh, they discourage um, PTAC people from taking their time to deal with companies that are looking for grants. However, I'm the only one in my territory that does what I do. So lots of nonprofits are my clients and lots of them want to know where they look to get grants. And so I've got a program for all the, the nonprofits that are in my territory to help them navigate grants.gov, which is one of the best government websites it was it's recent it was 2017 it was developed so you don't have a bunch of changes going on in it because it was developed late here and so i help those nonprofits in my territory find what they're looking for and it's been very rewarding for me to get a call from somebody to say yeah we applied for three grants for our fire station and i'll be darned if we didn't knock out two of them so that's what I do. I'll help. Uh, we've got in southeastern Utah, especially, we've got some people that'll write grants for you. And uh, so there's a way for those nonprofits in those seven eastern Utah counties that I handle to get more information about obtaining grants. Um, so that's a very good thing for those nonprofits, right? That's we're coming to the very end of my presentation. Um, what's next? Okay. Um, you can send me an email and I'll help you get started with the basics of your SAM registration and the basics of getting involved in government contracting. And from there, we will someday, maybe we'll actually be able to meet again, right? I mean, so we'll talk about, we'll talk about uh, 
getting you more involved in government contracting. And once you get the hang of it, folks, um, you're going to want to do more of it because the when you obtain a contract, you're obtaining an award. Uh, you'll be surprised how easy it is to do business with government entities. And by the way, something I didn't mention, I help businesses get contracts or awards at all levels of government. I've been talking almost exclusively about federal government today, but I've worked with businesses again and again on state contracts, walked them through the procurement process at the state level, and uh, also the postings, the solicitations postings, they use a different site at state level. Even uh, I'm able to search all the way down to county and city level to help businesses understand what's, what's floating out there for them to bid. So Megan, that pretty much wraps me up. I'll, always feel free to email me, call me. Uh, and if for some crazy reason in this time, in this age, I don't answer the phone, uh, please leave a message. I'll get right back to you. Megan, what else can I do for you? I've got a, I got a question. Uh, one of the businesses on Facebook is asking, how much money in the bank do I need? Do I need to pay for the, for the services up front and to get paid after? Well, it wouldn't be any different. Than, it depends on what business you're in. So uh, the answer is depends. Uh, it depends on business that you're in and the product and or service that is being requested if you're asking does the government front any money for uh say you're say you're in the business of supply you're in the distribution business they don't front any money for that so you're going to have to have whatever you quote you'll have to be aware that you'll have to have the funding to fund that project for 30 days anyway and then you, after you submit your invoice it's going to take 30 more days so we're talking 30 60 days is what it'll take to get paid on any contract or any RFQ response by you, by you and your business. Um, is there any crazy tracking? That's the other question that came Is there through. any what tracking? Sorry? Crazy tracking that you have to do for government contracts. Uh, it's encapsulated, uh, there's no crazy tracking, but it's encapsulating it, it, it's encapsulated in the invoice submittal software. There's, there's, I know of two, actually I know of three, sorry. So if you're doing a, if you're doing a job for the Forest Service, you submit your invoice through their program called Viper, V-I-P-R. You have to be registered on there anyway to work with the Forest Service. So you have to be on SAM.gov and then in Viper you submit your invoice through Viper and you can track it through that, through that. So no crazy tracking. You just have to be aware of what invoice service that particular agency is using when you submit your invoice. But no other crazy tracking. No, no, no invoices go into oblivion. It's not like sending your tax return to the IRS. You may or may not hear. It's definitely tracked. You can, you can pull it up. You can see where your invoice is. And if you get lost, like I did a couple of times, you call a help desk and they say, well, we'd love to process it, but you forgot to cross this T. Okay. So anyway, that's the answer to that question. Nothing crazy on in terms of getting paid. No. Is there any specific information that a business needs to bring with them when they have a meeting with you? Specific information? Uh, like, a, like an intro or anything like that? Do they need to bring any inf information uh, to help you out to get process started, anything like that? No. If you go to Sam, if we go into sam.gov, you will need your uh, banking information because it goes in there electronically. The contracting officers, if they're going to pay, I should have mentioned that. If you're going to get paid too, it's about 95% electronic now. So you have to provide your banking information in SAM.gov so that they know where to send the payment. Uh, very little, very little business transacted with the government anymore is paid by check. Um, so no, the answer is no, other than to bring your basic business information with you. We'll, I'll even help you call or get a hold of DUNS, register for your DUNS number. And uh, most of it, 
we could probably do remotely until you get ready to get serious about responding to a solicitation. Very cool. Very cool. Effie, do you have any questions for Jack? I am, I guess I'm more with the Salt Lake Valley because that's where I tend to pilot more. Is there somebody else that I need to contact? Because I see that you, I do have somebody in Daggett County that I want to talk further in with. I didn't quite get all that. I did get Salt Lake. What part of the valley do you live in? I live in, Salt, in West Valley, in Salt Lake. West Valley? Okay. She's part of the Salt Lake Women's Center. She's oh. in the Yeah. Sorry. But that's what you look, that's why you look familiar. You were on uh, last week too, right? The yeah. SB presentation. I'm trying to learn everything I can possibly get and all the information possible. <laughs> yeah, join the club. Um, so West Valley PTAC, I'll have, uh, if you wouldn't mind that email address, if you wouldn't mind emailing me some, uh, your email address, contact information, I'll get somebody in, in touch with you. Yes, that's, I will do that's that. That's not my territory. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate you. Thank you. Well, in Daggett County, you are though, correct? That's for sure. You bet. Okay. Yeah. And so I will reach out and tell you a little more information about the clients over there as well. Yeah. So send me that information and then say, we also, I'm also doing the West Valley thing and I'll send that to my counterpart. Okay. And we may have a discussion. The two of us may have a discussion. May, may be all right. Well, why don't you handle it? Okay. But, but you know what I mean? So I rather than, it. rather than create a, an extra step for you, we, we would probably have that discussion. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Talia, do you have any questions? I'm just checking across the different, uh, the different boards that we have. I think we've answered everything, unless there's anything else that you think that, that we need to know, Jack, I think that we've, uh, we've covered most everything that I can think of at this point in time. Not, not for today. Um, I'm kind of, I keep calling in the uh, title of my workshops, nuts and bolts. If you get, if you get into some items where you want to go through some nuts and bolts of certain government contracting aspects, I'm the guy. So let me know and I'd be happy to help. Uh, how many people attended today? Do we know? I have a total of 23 if all of my numbers. I'll go through and I'll look. Uh, that's, that's okay. I was just I was just hoping that everybody understood that this kind of stuff is uh, the state the governor's office is happy to send me out for free and to do this work for you. By the way, if you get contacted by somebody who wants to charge you for this, they're a private company, they're a for-profit company, and you don't need them because you got me. And they're all over the place too. Once you register, if I felt like once I, we registered our business with Sam before I knew about PTech and things like that, because yeah. back in the old days, I felt like I was contacted every week by somebody. How are you finding your contracts? How are you doing this? Um, and then I learned about PTech and what they did. And I was like, I can get that for free because they'll <laughs> charge you a huge amount of money. <laughs> it's, it's shocking almost. And so yeah. They're kind of sneaky too. I mean, they'll send an email that looks very legitimate. And uh, I tell everybody, if you get one of those emails and it doesn't end in .gov from the, from the sender, it's a private company and you don't need them. So, because we're doing this for free. And that's- Definitely, definitely. Right. We have a lot of really amazing resources. It's just a matter of, of getting the information and tapping into those resources. And so that's what this, what, what this, particular webinar series is about is getting those resources out there so people do know about them and we can tie into them so we Great. appreciate your time jack um and Great. we know that you're super super busy i appreciate any time that i reach out to you you are like right back with answering my questions and and helping us out and so we really appreciate that if you're watching the replay on this feel free to leave your comments i do check those every single day right. if you have any other questions you can reach out to my center or jack jack's information is on the screen here um, and get your questions answered. We really appreciate your time and we hope that you guys have a great day. We'll see you next week on Methods of Modern Fat Nuts. Bye-bye. Thanks everybody.